What's up guys, Josh here, Kyler Holland, Adobe Premiere Master. Today we're gonna show you the difference between a gimbal and a glide cam. Do you remember these things? These things are like from what, 2000 and Yeah, 2008, 2009, 2010, pretty much. Devin Super Trap, man. It all started with this. So let's see how these new techie gimbals compare to the old school stabilization systems. Let's go, come on. Let's get it. Walk straight, here we go. Just a simple walk. For a 24 mil, it's easy enough, right? Just a little stroll, not bad. A little bit of wind, is it pretty easy? Yeah. Is it getting I mean, heavy? No. No, it's not getting heavy for Kyler. Not getting heavy for me. But it's definitely hard because it does sway. <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. So now we're gonna do a 50 millimeter focal length change. And the downside to using a manual stabilizer, yeah. Kyler already knows, is yeah. that you're gonna have to rebalance the rig. Yeah. Luckily, it's not that difficult, but if you're a newbie to a stabilizer like this, it's gonna take you a little bit of a minute. Yeah. So let's see how long it takes Kyler to get well, this all set up. For starters, I forgot to adjust the uh, wrong side, so then I have to wait for this to go, but just like that, I am ready to go. All right, not bad. There we go. Not bad, okay, cool. So now I'm gonna just adjust my lens here to 50. You're at 50, right? Yep. Cool, I'm at 50, it was as easy as that. All I had to do was turn the zoom ring and the Weeble S is still holding up. All right, now we're just gonna go ahead and walk straight. Ready in three, two, one, go. Beautiful sky, man. Oh yeah, it's great. I think you definitely have to focus more when you're on a glide cam because you're controlling all of the angle pitch rotation with one hand and you're trying to stay as steady as you can with the other hand. Yeah, like right there, I just had a bump. On the gimbal, it's a little bit tough because the pan kind of wobbles side to side every now and then, but... You can see my pan. <laughs> hey, now that I have your attention, this video is brought to you by Kyler Holland's YouTube channel. Make sure you click subscribe because I support my friend Josh over there. All right, back to the tutorial. Stable. Let's see. So Josh and I were talking and there's one scenario where I think the gimbal would actually perform better than the glide cam. And that's when you're running. Because when you're running, you're bouncing all over the place and this thing's just going all over the place and it's hard to use two hands to constantly control this. So, I say we uh, do a little running sequence. Okay, but it's not a race. It is a race. No, it's not a race. It is a race. Oh, man. How you doing over there, buddy? I think mine's pretty stable, too. Woo. All right. Ooh. Get out of my sun. Thanks. I won, by the way. Maybe not the footage, but I won the race. But you can see what happens with wind, right? The horizon line just completely goes off the charts. Uh, so I was filming, and as I'm running, the wind got to it, and it was like this. So, yeah. So that's the thing, guys. Like, that's where gimbals just like, Ugh! Comparing gimbals to glide cams is not even a comparison when you take into account wind and running and human error because this thing does not mess up. Can we also state the fact that your run and walk are also very important? So if you walk badly, if you run badly, it doesn't matter if you're using a glide cam or a gimbal, the footage is gonna have those up and down movements. So when you walk, when you run, you really wanna use that crisscross method and the bent knee method, right? You wanna be graceful like a dancer. I think you need to demonstrate what it is.
Now we're gonna put Kyler's glide cam to the test, and that is with a 70 millimeter orbit. We're not gonna walk crazy, we're not gonna run, we're gonna take our time, but what you really need to focus on is just the smoothness. So here we go. Ready? Kyler's a little bit backlit, but that's okay. Who does it better? Definitely you. This is shaky. 70 millimeter, baby. The problem is, is like my left hand that's controlling the yaw is just going all over the place. Yep, there's a bump. I mean, I'm not perfect too. Sometimes I get a little bit of bumps in my uh, in my pans, but yeah, overall, is... it's smooth, man. So I started off on manual stabilizers. I actually, that's how I started my YouTube channel. I have three at home, and then I started getting slowly into gimbals, you know, electronic stabilizers, all of that. Uh, lately, I've been picking up gimbals a lot more than my stabilizers at home. They're collecting dust. I mean. The whole thing is, is that gimbals are smaller, more powerful, more compact, and they stabilize even during windy conditions. And you can see that when you compare the footage between the glide cam and the gimbal, uh, I mean the, the B-roll shots, you can see one swaying more than the other. But obviously both systems have their pros and their cons. Some of the pros of the glide cam are. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like Josh said, I love using gimbals as well. Uh, but sometimes I just like using a glide cam a little bit more. I would say the pros are a little bit more of a natural look. Because when you have a gimbal, it is so locked off, it is stable, you know that shot is going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. However, when you use a glide cam, you can get that human element to your shots with the sway or with the natural panning, and you control all of it. So, they're both great, they both get the job done. And here's the thing, you can actually combine a manual stabilizer like a glide cam and a gimbal together to create a fake RE Trinity. And I actually made a tutorial on how to do this, you can just check it out right up here. But if you have both systems, combine them. That way you have the best of both worlds. So overall my opinion is, is that both tools are great if it fits in your budget try to go for both if you can. I mean, Glidecam is probably the more premium brand, but there's a lot cheaper manual stabilizers on the market that are about 130, 150 bucks. Get that along with the cheaper gimbal like the Weeble S because both are very affordable. Combine them, get the shots that you want because again, both of these systems have their pros and their cons, but both of them are so much fun in producing smooth, buttery footage. I agree. All right, guys. Check out Kyler Holland's channel. We'll see you in another video. Peace.